Welcome to Electro Online. Here's part two of our compound Atwood machine. In the previous video, we got this far. We got the partial derivative of the Lagrange with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, the time derivative of the partial with respect to x dot, and the time derivative with the partial of l with respect to y dot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with the two equations of kinematics that will describe the motion of the Atwood machine by utilizing this form of the equation. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take this one and move the parcel of L with respect X to the other side, set them equal to each other. So using this first equation, we get the following result. We take the time derivative of the parcel of L with respect to X dot, which is this quantity right here. It's M1 plus M2 plus M3 times X double dot. Plus, and we'll reverse the order of those, m3 minus m2 times y double dot, and we'll set it equal to the partial value with respect to x. Notice the negative will become a positive when we move to the other side. We go find it, it's right over here, so we move that to the other side, and we get m1 minus m2 minus m3 times g. The second equation over here will get the following. First of all, we take the time derivative of the Lagrange with respect to y dot, which is over here. We'll copy that down, and we can reverse the order. We have m3 minus m2 times x double dot plus m2 plus m3 times y double dot is equal to, now we need the partial of L with respect to y. We move to the other side, this becomes a positive. We grab this quantity right here, and we have m2 minus m3 times g. Now these are the two equations of kinematics that describe the motion of the compound Atwood machine. We have the acceleration relative to the x component, which means this gives us the acceleration of m1. We have the acceleration for m2, and now related to that, we can of course get the acceleration of m3, which is the same as m2, but in opposite direction. Well, sometimes we like that in a different form. Sometimes what we like to do is we like to have it explicitly as acceleration, either in the x or the y coordinate system. In other words, is there some way in which we can solve these two equations simultaneously, either for x double dot or y double dot? In other words, the acceleration with respect to M1 and the acceleration with respect to M2 and M3? And the answer is yes. These are simply linear differential equations. And what we can do, for example, is to solve for X double dot, we can somehow eliminate this. If we add the two equations together, how can I get rid of the Y double dot? Well, we can do that by, and I'm looking for a different color. If we multiply the top equation by the coefficient of Y double dot, in the second equation, so we're going to multiply this times m2 plus m3, and then we multiply the lower equation by the coefficient in the upper equation, that would be m3 minus m2, then the coefficients of the y double dot will be equal for both equations. And then all we have to do is subtract the one equation from the other equation, the y double dot will disappear, and then we can have an equation for x double dot only. Hmm. That seems like a lot of algebraic work, and the answer is it is, but it can be done. So what we're going to do is, on our third video, for the same problem, we will then mathematically work out what this is equal to. Since we have still a little bit of board space, let me go ahead and at least do the first step, and then we'll do the rest of the algebra later. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiplying this times this, we get the following. We'll end up with six terms. We have m1 times m2 plus m2 squared plus m2 times m3 plus m1 times m3 plus m2 times m3, well I have one of those already, so that plus two of those, and plus m3 squared. And the whole thing multiplied times x double dot. For the second term, I will end up with an m3 minus m2 multiplied times an m2 plus m3 times y double dot, 
and on the right side we end up with multiply again we'll end up with six terms we have m1 times m2 this times that that would be minus m2 squared this times that that's minus m2 times m3 this times this gives us plus m1 m3 this times this gives us two of these minus two of those and this times this gives us a minus m3 squared and the whole multiply times g for the second equation i'm going to multiply this times this i end up with four terms over here this will be m3 squared minus 2 m2 m3 and then plus m2 squared and that will be times x double dot over here I end up with I'm missing a plus here there we go plus m2 plus m3 multiply times m3 minus m2 times y double dot and that equals when I multiply this times this uh, let's see here that gives us um, well, the signs are a little bit confusing let's try this m2 m3 minus m3 squared minus m2 squared and this times this would be plus m2 m3 in other words, I will have two of these. So I can simply write two of those, get rid of that, and the whole thing multiply times g. Now the next step, we're going to subtract one equation from the other. So we'll subtract the second equation from the top equation. And when we do that, notice that the, the middle term disappeared, the y dot term disappears. So we can go ahead and cross that out. And then we'll end up with this minus this. And let's see here, we have an m3 squared, m3 squared, so that will cancel out. We have an m2 squared, m2 squared here, so that will cancel out. We have a 2m2, 3, but that's a negative times a negative, that's plus. On the left side, we now end up with this minus this, which means m1 m2 plus 4 m2 m3 plus m1 m3 all multiplied times x double dot and on the right side we get the following we get m1 oh and let me write a little higher so i have some room later on so we have m1 m2 minus 2 minus 2 that would be minus 4 m2 m3 and plus m1 m3 all multiplied times g and then finally if we want to get the value for x double dot we need to go ahead and divide both sides by the coefficient so take whole thing and move it over to the other side so divide this by the following we get m1 m2 plus 4 m2 m3 plus and that would be m1 m3 and here we have the final answer for the acceleration for x double dot that would be the acceleration for m1 now you see we need to do a similar thing to get the acceleration for m2 and m3 but again since we're out of board space let's go ahead and do one more shoot another video for part three where we algebraically solve for y double dot which means we're going to have to multiply this equation by the coefficient in front of x double dot and we're going to have to multiply this equation by the coefficient of x double dot over here to find the value for y double dot and to find the acceleration for m2 and m3 and that's how it's done